And I'm not a monster. I'm a person that made mistakes. I was a child. And I, I didn't even know what I was doing. We all want to protect children. Listing juveniles on the public sex offender registry doesn't protect anyone. Putting their name and their faces and their address on the public registry devastates entire yeah. families. If we were playing with dolls and the dolls were kissing, then we were kissing. And then it led to a little fondling, you know, over the clothes, under the clothes. That was, that was it, but obviously that was enough to, to convict. I was 12 and she was eight. I was during the summer and I, you know, experimented and uh, did some things that uh, shouldn't have done, but that I didn't know. I didn't know the consequences. I thought something like this came with a grounding or a spanking. I was still that young. I've spent maybe close to eight years behind bars. Is that you? That is me. I was young, right. When you hear sex offender, you don't think it's a 12-year-old little boy that's crying himself to sleep in a juvenile cell. Most people think if you're on a registry, you're definitely dangerous. And so, um, but it's really the real fact about it is that there's a broad range of offenses that can place a person or especially a child on the registry. Where's your socks? We all want to keep our children safe. The problem is that the laws are based on faulty assumptions. They're based on um, the assumption that uh, children and adolescents who commit sex offenses will are at high risk to commit more sex offenses. This isn't true. There are many studies, there's been over 30 that show low recidivism rates for youth who have sexually offended. That's the main point of registration and notification, is to reduce sexual recidivism. And that does not work. I was a child. I was misunderstood. I did something wrong, yes. Punish me, and punish me appropriately. But don't throw me into a den of lions. And I can understand paying some sort of price for doing something that wasn't right, but absolutely not have them put on the public registry and to have their names in all of the local newspapers and then expect them to go to school and mingle with the other kids. The police will publish your information on the official website. Uh, in some states, it's, they'll make mail mailers, they'll make flyers. Sometimes it's lawn signs um, saying sex offender lives here. And all the neighbors were handed out pamphlets describing my sons in the house and where the sex offenders live. Vigilante groups coming to my house, the Molotov cocktail thrown at the house. The holes are still there around my bedroom window where the BBs went through the vinyl siding on the house. They were 11 and 13 years old. A person on the registry, even if it's a person that's 11 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old, cannot enter or live in zones that are frequented by children, meaning a park, a daycare, a nursery, a school. I found it hard to you know, find a place to live. Find, it's been difficult to keep jobs. Um, I dropped out of college because of the registry. The registry also directly affects my own children, my wife. We have moved nine different times within the past three years. They've been in four or five different schools. And that makes me feel like a horrible parent because I can't give my children what they need. No matter how hard they're trying right now in their lives to get their lives together, it's never going to go away. You just Google up their names and up comes all the sex offender information. For what happened when they were 10 and 12 years old, it's turning out to be a life sentence. This person has this label for the rest of their life based on something that they did when they were a child. Juveniles should not be subjected to registration or notification. You know, in the absence of any supportive evidence whatsoever that there's a community safety effect, youth should be protected from these laws.